Evolving the self-image. We're going to discuss a handful of quotes from Neville Goddard as well as James Allen to get deeper into the concept of self-image. I've done a handful of discussions on this particular concept. The idea is that when we evolve the self-image, in other words, as Neville puts it, no one to change but self, the outer world begins to change and reflect the self-image, the evolution of the self-image. And in the journey of creating what we desire, what we have to remember is that this is a constant journey of evolving our self-image to be in alignment with what we desire to create. And as a result, the thoughts, emotions, behaviors, and outer world circumstances change to reflect the self-image. So we're going to look at it from four perspectives. Number one, the desire and the evolution of the self-image, or how desire relates to it. Number two, consciousness as the cause rather than the effect-based self-image. In other words, a self-image based of cause rather than effect. In other words, seeing yourself as the cause or empowerment rather than the effect, disempowerment. Number three, cause and effect reflection of the self-image. In other words, we are always experiencing in our reality the reflection of our self-image. And we can reflect upon our experiences to evolve the cause within. In other words, evolve our self-image to be more in alignment with what we desire to create. And then finally, number four, maintaining states of mind to affirm the self-image, states of mind. Neville says, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. To be transformed, the whole basis of your thoughts must change. But your thoughts cannot change unless you have new ideas, for you think from your ideas. All transformation begins with an intense, burning desire to be transformed. The first step in the renewing of the mind is desire. In other words, to renew the mind and find ourselves into higher levels of empowerment-based or consciousness as the cause rather than the effect-based self-image, we create ideas from our desires. We ask ourselves, what is it that we desire to create? The journey is as revealing as the destination. Thus, the journey is as valuable and joyous as the destination. Because on the journey, we are revealing what is in our self-image. And through the reflections of our experiences, we can evolve our self-image to bring forth what we desire, as well as move into higher levels of self-image. In other words, be more in alignment with our higher self. And by referring to the concept of renewing of the mind, we're really looking at it from rather than seeing yourself as the effect of the outer world, disempowerment, moving more so each day into higher levels of you are the cause of reality. In other words, the way you interpret reality is what you say I am to, most of it subconscious, which is revealed through your proactivity or your reactivity and how you interpret people, environment, circumstance, and information. All of these are clues to reveal what is in your self-image. And one of the questions we want to ask ourselves is based on the clues of what shows up for us. Are we in alignment or in misalignment with creating what we desire? And this brings us a lot of joy because then we can evolve our self-image by affirming the desired mental states, which I'll talk about later. James Allen says, To desire is to obtain. To aspire is to achieve. Shall man's basest desires receive the fullest measure of gratification? and his purest aspirations starve for lack of sustenance, such is not the law. Such a condition of things can never obtain, ask, and receive. Desire plus idea is to ask, and the journey, a bridge of incidents, to the realization, as Neville puts this, is the receive. In other words, we can reflect. So we get to the destination, and we can also reveal how we get to the destination as well as what to do on the journey, which is to be more in alignment with the self-image in cross-reference of the idea or the desire. As Neville puts it, what would it look like if it was true? What would you be doing right now if you were living in the end? All of this is an automatic reflection of the self-image. And if there's incongruence, we can evolve through choosing states of mind that are in alignment with the affirmation of the desire. In other words, seeing the journey 
from a place of flow rather than force or resistance, seeing the journey as more proactive rather than reactive, or as he puts it, reactive to the world of Caesar, which is five sensory data-based elements that appear to deny your assumption. The key word is appear. They only appear to deny your assumption based on what you believe to be true, which is stored in your self-image, which are clues to evolve the self-image, to bring more in alignment with what we desire to create. Number two, consciousness as the cause rather than the effect-based self-image. In other words, our goal is to evolve our self-image to seeing ourselves as the cause and creator of our reality. Neville says, the light is consciousness. Consciousness is one manifesting in legions of form or levels of consciousness. There is no one that is not all that is, for consciousness, though expressed in an infinite series of levels, is not divisional. There is no real separation or gap in consciousness. I am cannot be divided. So at the highest level of consciousness, I am. It's the recognition of I am, and perhaps there's even higher levels to that, but let's look at from the perspective of what we desire to create. What we want to identify is what we identify with, the perspectives that we choose based on I am, which reveal the self-image. Watch the last video I did to get deeper into this. James Allen says, Achievement of whatever kind is the crown of effort, the diadem of thought. Okay, crown of effort, diadem of thought. More accurately put, it is the reflections of the experiences of how our self-image is being externalized to evolve our thoughts within, to bring it into alignment of affirmation of what we desire to create. He says, by the aid of self-control, which is this is what we're really talking about, self-control is cause and effect reflection, being proactive rather than reactive. If we react, understand the reactivity is based on past programming, and it's revealing itself, what's in the self-image. And we can evolve and feel less reactive. We'll talk about how so later on in the video. By the aid of self-control, resolution, purity, righteousness, and well-directed thought, a man ascends. By the aid of animality, indolence, impurity, corruption, and confusion of thought, a man descends. Number three, cause and effect reflection of the self-image. James Allen says, all that a man achieves and all that he fails to achieve is a direct result of his own thoughts. In a justly ordered universe where loss of equipoise would mean total destruction, individual responsibility must be absolute. A man's weakness and strength, purity and impurity are his own and not another man's. They are brought by himself, they are brought about by himself and not by another. And they can only be altered by himself, never by another. His condition is also his own and not another man's. His suffering and his happiness are evolved from within. As he thinks, so he is. As he continues to think, so he remains. Now, this is all based on the assumption that we see ourselves more so each day as the cause of our reality. And by taking the power back, but really renewing the mind more accurately put, we always have the power. By renewing the mind, we realize we have the power. We assume and realize that we are the creator of the experiences in our life. And through the recognition that we are the creator of our experiences, we evolve within to observe as the experiences change. What is really happening is we're choosing what we call states of mind or attitudes of mind. And there are infinite different states of mind. And these states of mind are perspectives. And in order to automatically choose the perspective, we reflect upon the different experiences that we have each day and ask ourselves, is this something that we associate with as the cause from within? In other words, we can cross references back to where this programming was instilled. And if we don't understand where it was instilled, one day we will be able to figure it out. But that's okay because whatever experience we have, we realize that we can change it through evolving the programming within. By referring to evolving the programming within, I'm really referring to, from my perspective, the four modalities that I use, which I'll talk about in a moment. All these four modalities allow you to do is affirm certain states of mind that are in alignment with being the cause of reality. In other words, empowerment and 
as Neville says here, by states of mind. He's referring to attitudes of mind. The New Testament begins, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The word repent means a radical change of attitude. A radical change of attitude means that you've always had certain attitudes towards experiences and then radically change the attitude will result in radically altering the experiences in the outer world. He says, don't condemn yourself for the state into which you have fallen. If you don't like it, move into another. Don't feel sorry for yourself. For if you do, you will make the state a habit and remain there for the rest of your days on earth. Instead, you can believe this doctrine and move out of any state. So the idea behind this is that when we shame ourselves because we've identified with a state of mind that has created a certain experience and there's shame infused in that state, we begin to affirm that state of shame and further experience that same circumstance or similar circumstance as the reflection of what's within the self-image, which contains the shame. Now what we would then want to realize is that there is something that we experience call shame, which usually came from past experiences, and we can evolve using one of the four modalities, which I always refer to, which I'll talk about in a moment. He says, how do you get out of a state? Through belief. You must believe in the doctrine. You are told whatsoever you desire, believe you have received it, and you will. The precepts of Christ must be accepted literally, for they will be fulfilled literally. Can you believe the precept that believing you have already received your desire will bring it forth into your world. If so, then tonight you can change the things that are happening in your world. And if you can believe and persuade yourself that things are as you want them to be to the point of actually moving into the feeling they are true, they will be felt and seen in your world. You must feel your desires are already realized, that they are already true, for the truth of any concept is known by the feeling of certainty that the thought is true. And to further emphasize this, James Allen reflects upon key areas that may appear to deny the assumption. Key word again is appear to deny the assumption. The will to do springs from the knowledge that we can do. Doubt and fear are the great enemies of knowledge. And he who encourages them, who does not slay them, thwarts himself at every step. He who has conquered doubt and failure has conquered failure. His every thought is allied with power, and all difficulties are bravely met and wisely overcome. His purposes are seasonally planted, and they bloom and bring forth fruit, which does not fall prematurely to the ground. So, as we experience on our journey, the journey, cause and effect reflection, and anything that appears to deny the assumption that our desire that will be brought forth, and that this idea is has two parts. The desire to bring forth the idea reveals to ourselves about ourselves so we can evolve ourselves, as well as reveals how to bring forth what we desire. We ask ourselves, how can we evolve the self-image within? So I use four personal, powerful, self-evolving or affirming modalities. Self-talk, revision, subconscious mind audios, and environment. So if the goal here is to evolve ourselves, to bring ourselves into alignment with the self-image that is accurately reflecting the outcome, the desired outcome, then what we do is we evolve it within via the same way our subconscious mind had affirmed the self-image, which was based on past experiences, which is usually environment-based. However, the universal truth behind all of this is that it was impressed on our subconscious mind. And one of the things that has more power than the outer world should we choose to give it more power is our imagination. Thus, Self-talk, or what we say when we talk to ourselves, in relation, in cross-reference to what we experience each day, has the power to evolve our self-image. Same with the concept of revision, and I'll give some examples. And one of my favorites, subconscious mind audios. And I also like to reflect upon environment, because just as we continue to bring forth what we desire and evolve ourselves, there may be certain information in the outer world or environment 
that continues to affirm past programming. So we want to be aware of it and evolve the meaning based on those elements in those environments or change the environment around. These are the four ways, and you can find many different ways of working with these four ways in which our subconscious mind is impressed to externalize accordingly. And more accurately put in discussion with this video, the self-image. Self-talk. Is our self-talk in alignment with bringing forth what we desire and how it can be brought forth? And if fears or doubts are experienced on the journey, can we reflect upon the fears and doubts and evolve those fears and doubts through the conversations we have with ourselves? This is absolutely possible because reality is consciousness externalized and self-talk is consciousness that is in the inner world. It has not externalized as a person, although it can, because as you continue with that self-talk, you will notice you will experience people that say the same thing in the outer world. In other words, the self-talk materializes or externalizes as the people to reveal the self-talk within. But it begins within because we're making change within for two reasons. Number one, because we would like to further realize that we can work with our imagination to create reality. And number two, we become more self-reliant. By evolving ourselves within via the self-talk, then we realize that we can evolve perspectives on the different experiences, and we don't necessarily need to get information from others. We can choose the information that is in alignment based on what we know, cross-reference, our beliefs, our assumptions, perspectives that are in alignment with creating what we desire, and have an inner dialogue or inner voice conversation. And I've done a few videos on those. I'll put some links in the description. Self-talk within to evolve the meaning within, which is really evolving the self-image within and having reality experience. Accordingly, to reflect the self-talk. Now, the more you engage in self-talk that is in harmony in relation to how you can bring forth what you desire, the more you're going to notice that you're going to feel less reactive to the outer world, people, environment, circumstance, information that may at one point appear to deny your assumption, but through the empowering self-talk of persisting in the assumption, you're noticing that now the experience has changed to allow or facilitate the journey or be in alignment with creating what you desire, or more accurately put, the idea that you desire to bring forth. The next is revision. Simply put, you have the opportunity to reflect upon how you experience reality and your different interactions with people, with environment, with information and change the meaning around by creating a new story of how you wish you would have played it. Had it gone in the ideal scenario that was in alignment with what you desire to create. For example, if your desire is to create a successful business and you've experienced what you call rejection throughout the day as you were prospecting, you evolve the meaning to realize that they were actually contributing. In other words, you revise the scenes and see them actually not only revealing to you why they're not interested in buying, but they perhaps then, as a result of you having a conversation and dialogue with them, they're now more interested in buying, or they refer people to you as a result of your being, which is one of authenticity and care towards them. That would be a form of revision that will be more in alignment with creating the desire that you want or the idea that you want to see brought forth, which is the business success than simply accepting the rejection as in you're not good enough because they did not accept you. Now, the third is one of my favorites. You have the power to create subconscious mind audios and communicate in the audios as if you were watching these videos or listening to any of your favorite programs out there with messages that are in alignment with exactly what you need to hear to bring forth what you desire. And if you play these and you listen to them on a regular basis, they will change your reality. I know because I was always listening to Brian Tracy and 21 Secrets of Self-Made Millionaire by Brian Tracy, specifically put, and authors like James Allen and Napoleon Hill over and over again, the same information. And as a result of listening to it, I noticed my behaviors would change, how I interpreted reality changed, my self-image would change, and the results would change as a result. So you have the power to create subconscious mind audios and listen to them on a regular basis. One of the questions I get is, what if you don't like the sound of your own voice? Well, the key is, if you really want to build a relationship with your subconscious mind and create reality from the perspective 
of the accuracy of what you desire to instill as far as your self-image goes, then you want to build a relationship with how you sound. Personally, I didn't like how I sounded back in the days, but now I've learned that my own voice has the ability to persuade myself more so than any other subconscious mind audio or audio programs that I could learn. Although I did use them, as mentioned back in the days, I now rely on my own custom subconscious mind audios in which I allow myself to listen to myself and my own voice and my own phraseology and my own style has a greater impression on my subconscious mind to create accordingly. Now we're using these four modalities to reflect upon each of the experiences that we have during the day and based on what shows up where we see ourselves as the effect rather than the cause, we evolve the meaning, the beliefs and assumptions about that experience through the cause and effect reflection and say, is this belief and assumption about these different experiences that we're having on the journey in alignment with the self-image, how you see yourself to be? What would it be like if it was true, based self-image that Neville refers to, and evolve the perspectives within? Watch the last few videos I did when I talk about perspectives. So we can identify with automatically. The I am identifies automatically. We don't have to consciously pick all the perspectives. We'll notice we'll automatically align with the perspectives when we have evolved the self-image. And then finally, environment. Environment is very important. This programming got into our subconscious mind which created our self-image based on the environment, the experiences that we've had in our past. So thus, we continue to evolve and guard our subconscious mind by picking and choosing the environments that are most in alignment with what we desire to create, or we can evolve the meaning around those environments through, again, the self-talk, revision, or subconscious mind audios. So again, the goal here is to really value your desire, and as a result of valuing the desire or the idea specifically that is generated in your mind by valuing it and seeing it all the way to completion and you'll be able to see it all the way to completion with joy bliss and ease as you evolve what shows up on the journey your reactivity or the reflections of your experiences each day which reveal what's in your self-image through positive self-talk or more accurately put aligned self-talk because it's not just about trying to make it sound nice but more accurately put it is designed to help you see the potentialities of how whatever is showing up, which may appear to be obstacle, is actually an opportunity through the self-talk, through the revision, through the subconscious mind audios and environment. Now, if you do these things, what you'll notice is you will build a deeper relationship with your subconscious mind. In other words, you will learn to self-persuade yourself, whereas many times, maybe in the past, you needed somebody else to persuade you to do something. And by persisting on this journey or maintaining this journey, you will learn how to build a relationship and become your own best friend, your own mentor, your own coach, your own consultant. Because the truth is this, most likely you already know what you have to do. We live in a time right now where we have access to so much information. The key is, how do we get ourselves to do it? Well, the same thing that governs whether we do it or not is found in our self-image, which is how we interpret ourselves in relation to reality. And all of this can be evolved via self-talk, revision, subconscious mind audios, or environment. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.